I certainly hope you're having a good day. If you're not, I hope something is said in the next few minutes that will improve your day. With Easter approaching, I want to talk to you for the next few sessions about what God did to win your heart. I'm going to bring some messages from this book, He Chose the Nails. It seems to be an appropriate discussion for this time of year. If you cannot stay around, of course, we certainly understand. Let us know how to pray for you before you slip out. But if you do have a few moments, can we talk about God's message, God's promise that comes through the nails that pierced the hands of Christ? I want to tell you about the list. My builder never should have asked me to create one. I actually dreaded showing it to him because he's a skilled builder, a fine friend, and he built us a great house. But the house had a few uh, mistakes. I really didn't notice the mistakes until I moved in. But once you take up residence in a place, I mean, don't you begin to see every flaw? And so the builder told me as, as we moved in, he said, just make a list, a punch list, and I'll take care of it. I said, well, if you say so, the bedroom door won't lock. The storage room window is cracked. Someone forgot to install a, a, a towel rack in, in one of the bathrooms. Uh, someone else forgot the knobs to the, <laughs> to the den door. As I said, the house was great, but that list just kept growing longer and longer. Looking at the list of the builder's mistakes caused me to think about God making a list of mine. After all, has he not taken up residence in my heart? And if I see flaws in my house, imagine what he sees in me. Oh, dare we think of the list he could compile. The door hinges to the prayer room have grown rusty from underuse. Uh, the stove called the stove that's called jealousy is overheating. The attic floor is weighted with too many regrets. The cellar is cluttered with way too many secrets. And won't someone please raise the shutter and chase the pessimism out of this boy's heart? I mean, the list of our weaknesses. <laughs> Would you like anyone to see yours? Or Would you like them to be made public? How would you feel if they were posted, posted high, posted high enough so that everyone, including Christ himself, could see? Well, may I take you to the moment that it was? Yes, there is a list of your failures. Christ has chronicled your shortcomings. And yes, that list has been made public. But, <laughs> praise to God, you've never seen it. Neither have I. How do we know? Well, just go to the hill of Calvary. Watch as the shoulders, as, as, as the soldiers shove the carpenter Christ to the ground and, and stretch his arms out against the beams. One presses a knee against a forearm and a spike against a hand. And Jesus turns his face toward the nail. And he looks just as the soldier lifts the hammer to strike it. Couldn't Jesus have stopped him? Of course. I mean, with the flex of the biceps, with the clench of the fist, he could have resisted the nail. I mean, is this not the same hand that stilled the sea? But the fist does not clench. And the moment is not aborted. The mallet rings and the skin rips and the blood begins to drip, then rush. And the questions follow. Why? Why didn't Jesus resist? Well, because he loved us, we reply, and, and that is true. That is wonderfully true. But forgive me, it's only partially true. There's, there's more to his reason. You see, he saw something. He saw something that made him stay. As the soldier pressed his arm, Jesus rolled his head to the side, and with his cheek resting on the wood, he saw a mallet, well, yes, a, a nail, of course, the soldier's hand, absolutely. But he saw something else. Through the eyes of Scripture, we can see what Jesus saw. 
The scripture says Jesus canceled the record that contained the charges against us. He took it and destroyed it by nailing it to Christ's cross. That's in Colossians 2.14. You see, between his hand and the wood, there was a list, a long list, a list of our mistakes, our lies, our lusts, our greedy moments, our prodigal years, a list of our sins. And God has done with us what I'm doing with our house. He, he has penned a list of our faults, the list that, that God has made, however, cannot be read. The words cannot be deciphered. The mistakes are covered. The sins are hidden. Those at the top are hidden by His hand, and those down the list are covered by His blood. Your sins, according to Scripture, are blotted out by Jesus. He has forgiven you all your sins. He has utterly wiped out the written evidence of broken commandments, which always hung over our heads. And He has completely annulled it by nailing it to the cross. That's another translation's version of Colossians 2.14. And that is why He refused to close His fist. He saw the list. What kept Him from resisting? This warrant, this tabulation of your failures and mine. He knew the price of those sins was death. He knew the source of those sins was you. And since He couldn't bear the thought of eternity without you, He chose the nails. Jesus Himself chose the nails. You see, had the soldier hesitated, Jesus Himself would have swung the mallet. He knew, he, he knew that the purpose of the nail was to place your sins where they could be hidden by His sacrifice and covered by His blood. So, the same hand that stilled the seas stills, stills your guilt. The same hand the same hand. The nail is the nail of God. And as the hands of Jesus opened for the nail, the doors of heaven opened for you. Why? Because He loves you. And because of that, He chose the nails. God bless you.